On this episode of the Ask Mike Reynolds Show, we talk about continuity of treatments, we talk about attending live con ed courses, and we finally have prepped a nice, well, I'm gonna try to box in Dave here, a nice gymnastics injury question. Yes. The Ask Mike Reynolds Show. Helping people feel better, move better, and perform better. Welcome back, everybody, to the latest episode of the Ask Mike Reynolds Show. I'm up here at Champion PT and Performance up in Boston, Mass. Hello, Jimmy. That's good. We got, we got the, the, the usual crew here, minus one, but Dan Pope, fitnesspainfree.com, Dave Tilly, shiftmovementscience.com. I'm getting good at this, right? Yeah, and Lenny, oh, Lenny is still, Lenny, oh, wow. Lenny, Lenny, Lenny must be on sabbatical. Lenny has to play. At, at, at this point. Lenny has to play. <laughs> well, if you haven't figured it out yet, we'll give you a little tip, but we batch record these episodes, right? <laughs> Spoiler so, alert. If, if you watch us on YouTube, we, we wear more than the same outfit every day. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, unfortunately, Lenny is out sick again. So, oh. <clears throat> you know, the, the part that's funny too is I think our ratings are going to go way down in my mind. Yeah, yeah. Lenny's my favorite character. So some, somebody on <laughs> iTunes said, said that one time. One of their reviews was hilarious. We read those. Uh, but uh, somebody said uh, Lenny's their favorite character. <laughs> I and love that. He's <laughs> like, a, like he's an actor. It's yeah. not really how Lenny is. He, he's, character he's my favorite dreams. character too, but he's a real person. But uh, we are here. We got a couple of great students here at Champion right now. Mike the Skid Scududo from Northeastern Did University and Keisha Heck from Regis Did University. Keisha is going to take her first stab at reading some questions. Big day. A lot of pressure. You've been anxious, haven't you? I'm a little nervous. Yeah, that's nervous. pretty good. Keisha, for the people on YouTube that are staring at this, tell us about this huge black and blue yeah. welt you have on your arm. It's like a paint on this black. gun show, what happened to you? I ran into a tree. She ran into a tree. It's just silly enough to make it. I can't make that up. I feel I like it's a bigger story. I don't want to know what the tree looked like. <laughs> Let's do, all right, let's do this, Keisha. Let's get to it. We can, still don't have a good nickname for Keisha, but we'll get there. All right, what do we got? Chris from Boston asks, I have come across physical therapists who have no continuity with exercises from session to session. In my mind, it seems like it would be hard to accurately track progress with this strategy. Is this something you've come across, and do you have any suggestions on how to effectively vary exercises while showing some type of consistency? Great question. So you mind, you are right. lack <laughs> of continuity between, you, and you said exercises, I'd say I, the whole PT world boggles my mind. We've been talking about this a lot lately. Uh, but you, you can go into a PT clinic with eight therapists with low back pain, and all eight of them are going to assess you, evaluate you, treat you completely different. And to me, that's just, that's just mind-boggling. I'm a big systems guy. I want to develop systems because they, they, they reproduce reliable results. So consistent results is what you want. So yeah, everybody's different and you have to do a, you know, an evaluation process, but you have to have some sort of you know, systemized you know, concept that you put into it. So yeah, with exercises, I see that too. Low back pain, one person's getting these three exercises and then they're getting maybe two of those, but a different third one, that type of thing. It's just that. out there. I, I think it just happens when you're when you're buffet. when you're either young or you're maybe not focused. I don't know if that's the right word, yeah. but like when you're young and you're just you're still kind of scuffling to figure out a little bit of what you want to do. I think I think that's where it comes down to. But I urge you to start thinking like, all right, well, you know, let let me come up like, don't pick exercises. Pick pick the issue you're trying to solve or whatever, and and come up with a system to achieve that. Right. Yeah. I would say it's two main things, and I can definitely say I've had as a younger therapist like totally guilty of this and one was just not having good time management skills in the clinic you know in your That's a good point in your day-to-day -day, like patient to patient like do you have a, a system of how you approach like I do all my my modalities and my manual therapy then my exercise and that and I felt like when I mixed that up and didn't have a two like buckets to go through like for a half hour hour I felt very like flustered and I was just, like think of random exercises then I couldn't remember what I did the time before so that's one of them and two is I think being a little bit more uh, detailed not in like the, the complexity of your notes but in like the systems of how you always see your exercise selection. So like we've started like a, a kind of a process here to see, okay, this is exactly what I do day one, day two. And I've tried to do more of like a strength and conditioning template where I take my A's, B's and things like that and make them inside with my manual therapy. And I find that like look at the, the table, it's much more organized and I can think, oh, we did these three things last week. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> That's a ton of info right there. <laughs> blowing it up. Dave, Dave's the man. Sorry. He's not the man. 
That's amazing. I'm sorry. I, so I, 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 I apologize for, <laughs> for being awesome. I mean, you can't apologize for being awesome. Dan? Um, I, I think you said that well, though, with our notes even here at Champion, what we try to do for ours, like, we don't just, like, document our, our, our treatments, like, alphabetically or anything. I mean, we, like, we, we put it, like, in the order that we wanted. There's, there's a flow to it. And it's just like with strength and conditioning. You know, you do your, you do your self-mile fascia release, your movement prep, your, you know. So for us, it's the same. It's tissue prep and stuff like that, you know. Yeah, I agree with what you guys have said. I think it's a fine line, though, because I've, I've definitely been in clinics where they do the same exercises for every single person, regardless of who it is and their problem. Yeah. You definitely don't want to be on that spectrum. Right. But then, like, I've been guilty of this, too, of just giving everyone the flavor of the week, new exercises, things you really just enjoy. Just went to a new course. Yeah, yeah new <laughs> course. <laughs> just learn something, yeah. Things out. Yep. Um, so I think, like, like Mike's saying, as you progress in your career, putting together systems and things you like for specific problems that you find, sure. right? And right. then the big part is that, what are you trying to get out of an exercise? You know, are you giving this person exercise for strength, mm -hmm. right? Is this dynamic control? Like, what the heck are you trying to accomplish? And then you want to just progress that up. So you have a, a series of exercises to give to people, and you want to make sure that you use the exercise for long enough, but not too long, so people continue making strength, make sure you're loading it appropriately. Um, so once you get to that point, it's just following general strength conditioning principles. So yeah, that's a big gaping problem. And, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, and to be honest with you, so I don't know, we're, this is this this is early, but we'll give for the the dedicated listeners that are listening to every word we say in our podcast. We're working on a product that's going to solve all these issues soon. Da -da -da. So we've been we've we've been we've been rattling our brains for for months. I've been doing it for years, but like together as a group, we're going to try to we're going to try to share with you guys exactly how we systemize our assessments and treatments um, for like a huge mega product. It's going to be. The, the best thing, you know, that I've ever done. It's going to be the, awesome. the summation of everything I've learned so far. So, um, so it's coming. So we'll we'll throw that out there. But Keisha, what do we got? Andreza from the UK asked, should I join a McKinsey course to learn the McKinsey method, or just read the books of the McKinsey Institute? Is that enough? All right, so should you go to a live McKenzie course or just read the McKenzie books? Have any, has anyone done McKenzie? I have. I have. I, 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 some. I did one, yeah. Did, have you done any, Dan? No, what do you think, Dave? So I think that uh, <coughs> they are good to learn the their system, as we're talking about, like the way they approach things in a very systematic way is, is solid. Um, and I also think that their exercise selection progression is really good. They have a really good idea of how to handle tricky presentations in different categories of people. I will say it did get a, quite a bit redundant in the lab session. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, I think I remember that yeah, too. I think it was yeah. like the first like two to three hours, I was like, wow, this is awesome, I'm learning a lot. And then like a day I felt like I was like, okay, I, I get it, like I could. Do so you, I, I do you think think you could learn that from a book though? No, I don't think you could learn the principles in the, because watching books, them move. Their book's dry. I know, and it's watching like them, a lot, a lot of, of stuff is hands on too, you know, like where you put your hands for certain progressions and stuff, so yeah. I did both. I like took a couple courses and then I bought the, adjunct of books and kind of the rest of my own but yeah McK mckenzie's a lot of like hands-on and stuff too i mean a, a live course is always going to be better for that i mean I, I i'm a big fan of both i i actually prefer online education myself mm -hmm. but so i i would say i i really i like the concept of the book i think what if i were to stage it maybe i'd say is get the books read the books and if it's something you're liking and you're enjoying then by all means take it to the next step and go to the live course and that applies to any concept agree, right yeah. Yeah. you know so Awesome. All right, let's do it. Let's 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 go. Number three, Keisha. Jay from Dallas Keisha. says, "I have recently Keisha. had an uptick in gymnastics patients, which is a sport I am not familiar with, Me but either. would like to learn more about. What are the most common gymnastics injuries and/or movement dysfunctions? What are the best resources for learning about gymnastics, the physical requirements and mechanics of different gymnastics events, and the rehabilitation of injured gymnastics?" at least maximize return to function. Nah, you guys don't want to hear about <laughs> this. Let's, let's step in. Let's, <laughs> let's just, let's, we'll, uh, thanks so much, guys, for another great episode. Next question. Uh, oh, oh, sorry, <laughs> we'll let Dave. Dave, Dave this is your wheelhouse, this is right? It, man. This is I, me. I mean, so so Dave doesn't have to do it, but obviously, shiftmovementscience.com, which is Dave's uh, website, um, I mean, that's all he talks about. It's actually annoying. That's thanks. all That's all he thinks and talks about My all bad. day. It's amazing. My so, bad. so Dave, how, I mean, heck, I mean, he's looking for more info so more info go to Dave's site and check it out but yeah. heck where do you start yeah it's tough because there's not a well-established body of research like we have in many other sports so it's kind of a mixture of what's available from other body parts and then your intuition right so the most common injuries that's part of your question so for female gymnasts it's back pain then probably followed by uh, lower body stuff so they say statistically it's like ankle injuries ankle sprains and knees but I would say 
I see five more lower backs for every one ankle or knee. So clinically, I would say back and then knee and ankle overuse and then sometimes some upper body stuff. Guys, flip side, always shoulders, mostly the most common because of the upper body demand followed by knee. Is, is that event driven or is it, it is. really sex driven? Like, no, it's like, event driven because okay. men's gymnastics has much more upper body demand rings, right. uh, parallel bars, high bars, very shoulder intensive. Women's are much more back and hip dominant. So tumbling, vaulting and beam are kind of the same skill mechanics and they have one swing event versus guys have four, three swing events and then other makes stuff. sense. Yeah. And also guys just have more uh, skills that are shoulder intensive. So I would say that's probably the overlook of like bird's eye view of the injury demographics. And then uh, for the girl side, for back pain, mostly it's the way they extend. Like there's something going wrong with their shoulders and their hips that puts more pressure on their back. They land not in a great way. You know, soft tissue mobility over time falls apart because they're uh, overuse kind of stiffness. And same thing for guys, overhead limited mobility. Uh, cuff strength is not nearly as proportionally strong to the big guys. So you got to kind of tease out the injury itself. But I did write a book if you're interested. You can have it. And I also have oh, a course coming see, up. See, I didn't even know that. See, I was just, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to let him. One, one, one year in. I just, I, I, yeah, I, I, <laughs> just I, 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 was try, I was trying to be more sly for it. I was just like, <laughs> tell us more, Dave. <laughs> yeah. no, and I have a course coming up in a month. Nice. Online, right? Yep. All right, so where do they find more info on All this stuff? stuff's on the website. All right, so shiftmovementscience.com. Yep. Keisha, I want to hear from you. So yeah. Keisha's a gymnast. She is a gymnast. She's a PT student, and part of why she's here for some reason is, is Dave. Um, <laughs> but she's, she's uh, you know, I mean, she kind of sought us out, you know, because because of Dave's experience and stuff. So Dave's the guy that's that's trying to lead the, the trend towards these gymnastic injuries and understanding them better and, and getting more scientific. Keish is the PT student right now that's trying to learn. So from your perspective, you know, like, what, what, what do you think? What do you think he should do? You know, he or she—I forget the question. But what do you think they they should do from your perspective? Uh, I think just understanding specifics of the sport. So if they're saying they're having back pain with a certain event or a certain skill, you know, find out what that skill is and look at the the movement patterns that it is. If it's a YouTube video, if they have video of doing it. I mean, you have the background of what movement is just as a PT, so kind of use that and then just apply it to these more oddly functioning <laughs> movement patterns. Well, yeah, I mean, every sport d d does yeah. some unique thing to your body. So, I mean, Keisha said it really well, not only just, which, heck, nowadays, you just, you can Google it and put it, go on YouTube and look at some of these events, but everybody's got it on their iPhone, and if they don't, their mom does, yeah. right? So, Instagram. like, just, yeah, oh, or, it, yeah, Instagram <laughs> now. So, so that's a great point, is trying to get some video of that, and then, and then take that and say, like, well, I understand the basics of stress and biomechanics of the body, like, how does, how does that impart? Yeah. So, I would also put that last caveat is don't get too too far into the sport so except it's really important but a lot of what I've done that's been successful is based on the the joints themselves and the body and then I took it to a gymnastic specific application right. so really loose population right. that uses their joints at end range with high velocity right it's no different than baseball volleyball CrossFit I mean it's no different from from all of those mm -hmm. but you just got to understand the uniqueness of that sport right. right you know I think that's that's the main thing so um, awesome is that it that's three that's awesome three. good episode thank you so much guys finally got a nice gymnastics question yes. in for Dave nailed that's it my one university project right. that <laughs> yeah that's, that's right <laughs> <laughs> Dan, Dan submitted that That's question an, an just to make Dave feel better. I love that. Prospect question coming up next episode. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks so much, guys. We appreciate it. Go to Ask Mike Rino Oh, no, that's not the website. Go to MikeRinald.com. Click on the, the podcast link to ask us questions. we got a form there where you can fill, us, fill out any question you want. Kind of kind of really help us get some great content. We have a ton of great questions. We love, love all the ones that are coming in. Keep them coming. Go to iTunes, rate and review this, subscribe to us, and we will see you guys on the next episode. Episode.